Hello, everybody. Tis the season to be sewing Christmas applique. Just kidding. No, it's not. <laughs> we're a couple months early, but today we're going to be doing Christmas applique. Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining me. My name is Lisa. I'm with Lisa Cape and Quilts. Or I am Lisa Cape and Quilts. It's just me. And I'm so glad you're here. Um, in the description box, you're going to find the free tracing templates for Bells and Holly. It is an applique pattern that is designed to fit on a finished 12 inch by 12 inch quilt block, or you could use it for all kinds of stuff. I have something really exciting for you today, so stay tuned. Uh, before we get started, uh, I think last week, because I kind of changed the format of how I'm giving away the PDF each week, um, before we get started, I want to bring you over to show you where to get the PDF while it's free and to show you that there's actually two download links. Okay. Bells and Holly is going to be free for a week until October the 13th. Okay. And then it's going to be combined with the cutting files that's already in my Etsy shop. So if you have a cutting machine and you want to get the cutting files for Bells and Holly, you'll click the link that brings you over to my Etsy shop and that listing. If you're watching during the free week, there is a separate link for the PDF file only. As of October the 13th, that will be combined with the cutting file. So let me just show you because I think last week people were just going straight over to Etsy and getting the cutting files and wondering where the PDF was. Okay, so let me bring you over and I'm going to show you last week's video. Okay, I've put myself on pause. <laughs> it's kind of a funny face. Um, but here is the video up on YouTube and I've paused it. Okay. And as of the day I'm recording this, the tracing templates are still free. They're going to be free for last week's uh, pumpkins until October the 6th. Okay. So when you're on YouTube and you come down to open up the description box, I'm on a computer. Okay. And so um, right here, You'll see a pumpkin applique PDF only. There's a blue link right there. Let me just click on more. See that little darker word that says more? Let me click on that. When you do, it opens up the description box, the hidden description box. <laughs> and uh, then you see all kinds of links, right? And so I can see why it would be confusing. Pumpkin applique PDF only. Right here's that blue link. You click on that and you can get the PDF. Now on October the 6th and beyond that, you're not going to see this PDF link only. You're only going to see this link here, which brings you over to my Etsy shop. Okay, so indeed the PDF is free. Click on that very first top link to get that. Okay. All right. I hope that that takes away some of the confusion. We're going to come back over here and here we go. Okay. So I hope that that makes it a lot more clear. Now, before we get started, I want to show you, I have something really exciting for you today. <laughs> uh, if you were to take bells and holly and make nine quilt blocks, what would that quilt look like? Let's just pull that up on the screen before we move over. Usually I forget to do that. <laughs> so if you were just to repeat that and then put some really pretty Christmas fabric as a border, that is what your quilt would look like. Just repeating this block over and over again. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. Now next week, let me just give you a preview of what we're doing next week. We're going to come back to some fall stuff and this block is called flower harvest. Okay. Now I really think what makes this a fall block is picking out some harvest fall looking colors. Okay. It's flowers with leaves, but if you pick out some like really fall sort of warm and cozy looking fabrics, we're going to call this fall harvest. Okay. So that's the block we're doing next week. Stay tuned for that. Okay. So guess what I'm doing today? 
I am all the time saying, uh, well, usually we make quilt blocks, but I'm always saying you could take this applique and you could make a pillow, you could make this, you could put it on a shirt, but I never put it on a shirt with you. That's what we're doing today. I'm not making a quilt block today, y'all. I'm going to be sewing this applique on a t-shirt. <laughs> so I thought that that would be fun and something different. And it might give you an idea if you've never done it before on how to go about doing it. So are you ready to get started? Let's come on over to the pressing board. You're going to see I've already done the prep work. Um, remember last week I showed you how to uh, trim and glue together your placement guide. Well, this PDF has a placement guide too, and it's going to help put all of your pieces down in the right places. And it's two pages of tracing templates and they have been mirror imaged. So if you're ready uh, to use some heat and bond light or wonder under whatever, you're ready to start tracing from the right side. Let me show you what else I've got. So I've already, let me get organized for a second. I've already pre-cut all of my pieces with my scan and cut. So there they are. And the only thing that I haven't cut are the red berries of the holly because I thought, you know, why not use some buttons on my shirt? So I'm going to be hand sewing some buttons onto my shirt instead of using the round circles uh, from the tracing templates. I have a, y'all, I don't have a wide uh, arsenal of colors of clothing. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> like blacks, purples, pinks, grays uh, and like heather blue those are my favorite colors that i wear all the time i have a black t-shirt and i think that this applique would look lovely on a black t-shirt and so uh that's what i'm going to use today and then um stabilizer let's just talk about stabilizer for just a second before we move on what I have here is a piece of cutaway stabilizer. It's going to go on the inside of my shirt, behind the shirt, when I'm stitching down all of my applique because I do plan on using like a more denser uh, zigzag or satin stitch to sew everything down, right? Because my shirt's going to be washed multiple times and I really want that applique to stay nice and pretty. Stabilizer helps keep those stitches uh, nice and neat. It helps reinforce the t-shirt material when you're stitching through it. So hopefully we get a lot less puckering around our stitches. More importantly, after we wash and dry the garment, right? You could use a tearaway stabilizer. Um, I have found in my own personal experience when I do this and I use a tearaway that sometimes I get a little bit of puckering where my stitches are versus using a cutaway. Not to say you cannot use a tearaway. I'm just saying what I'm doing today. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to use a tearaway. And uh, once we're done with the applique, you'll see I'll come back and trim away a lot of the extra bits uh, because the, t the cutaway is actually going to stay in my t-shirt forever and just help reinforce those stitches forever, right? Okay, so that's what we have. Let's go ahead and warm up this iron. I had it completely shut off. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you what, we'll bring this in. We're gonna go ahead and create the applique to put on the t-shirt. And I have my silicone mat. Now, when looking at this applique, let's just talk about that for a second. Um, we have the pine cone and berries sitting on top, right in the middle of everything else. And so if we were to do the leaves and the bells, we really wouldn't see the placement for that pine cone and berries, right? So. I'm going to sort of do things in reverse a little bit for a minute. And uh, I'm going to place my pine cone pieces 
If you're doing the fabric for berries, you would place that too and make that one complete piece and then take it off and then place everything else and put that right back on top, right? I'm just going to be doing the pine cone because I'm using buttons for this part. Okay, so let me find all my pine cone bits, which are all the way at the bottom. Let's talk about thread that we can use. I'm just going to start layering these as I'm talking. Um, you could absolutely use embroidery thread to stitch down all of this applique. Today, I'm just going to use some black polyester thread. The brand I'm using today is uh, one of my favorites, YLI, Universal Polyester Thread. Um, with this black t-shirt, I kind of don't want to use like a, a shiny embroidery thread. If I were going to use like a red thread, then I might have used an embroidery thread. But I kind of want a matte finish with my stitches. Now all of these fabrics are exactly the same. So I'm looking at the camera and I can see that they're kind of all just blending together <laughs> and um, making one pine cone shape. But we will have to stitch down each one of these individual shapes. We're going to let that cool off for just a minute before we continue. Because that's hot. <laughs> Let's see. And then. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to just set that pine cone off to the side for a second. And then we can start fusing all of the rest of the pieces. So we're going there. We're going to start down here, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now I have to figure out which piece is which. <laughs> All right, so there's that piece. Just placing them in there like that. That goes there. That goes there. I kind of wanted to do like gold bells. We have piece number I have to lift that up for a second just to see where I placed it. There we go. Right along that edge there. Right along that edge there. Silver little dingling things for the bow. <laughs> What's the name of those pieces that hang down? I do not know. Oh, you know what? Let's place down piece number 12 first. Like that. And then place piece number 11. Piece number 11 should go right on top. And then piece number 16. Don't you think these placement guides really make a huge difference? And then piece number, what is that, 15? There we go. Now I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of heat so I don't move anything around. There 
There we go. And then we can bring in our leaves, which all kind of look the same. <laughs> That's not that one. That's that one. So that top leaf and that leaf. and that leaf. So let me just hit that real quick. Ooh, I'm a little nervous to sew in a t-shirt with you. <laughs> and I have a bit of a confession, so y'all bear me some grace today. I haven't done this in a long time with my sewing machine. I have embroidered applique on a t-shirt with my embroidery machine uh, like a year or so ago. But it's been a long time since I did it with my sewing machine. But that's okay. We're going to just do it together. And then the pine cone is just going to sit something like that. And then the berries are going to go over top of it. I don't really know that I have enough fused right there to hold that leaf on. If you do the berries with fabric, that indeed will cover all of those raw edges and then really make this into one piece, right? But because I want to use buttons, I might have to put this piece in manually. Manually. <laughs> or by itself. <laughs> I don't think it's going to stick is what I'm trying to say. All right, so we really need that to cool off completely before I try to lift that up. So there's my applique using the placement guide. We're just gonna set that off and we're done with this. Yeah, I think this is a game changer. I wish I would have thought about doing that with the baby blocks. Okay, so let's bring in my shirt and let's just talk about the shirt for a second because I always, <laughs> I always say, you know, sometimes I don't follow instructions and I don't think that I always do things the way you're supposed to do them. Uh, I believe you should pre-wash your shirt. Like if you just went out and bought a new shirt, you should probably pre-wash it before doing this on your shirt. Reason being is if your shirt shrinks the first time you wash it, it might distort your applique and make it wrinkly and uh, not as pretty as it was before you washed it, right? And I also think that you should probably pre-wash your fabrics that you're going to use as applique as well because if you use a shirt that has been pre-washed and you use fabrics that have not, it is very well possible that those fabrics are going to shrink a little bit the first time you wash them. Today, I'm using a brand new shirt that has not been pre-washed and I'm using fabric that I have not pre-washed. <laughs> so I'm breaking all the rules. But what I'm gonna do uh, is wash this and this is upcoming week and I will wear it next Friday and we'll take a look at it and see how it turns out. My idea, my thought process is that it's probably going to wrinkle a little bit. So my best advice is just wash everything before you do this. I just don't have time to do that y'all, <laughs> not, not this week. All right, so let's talk about placement for this applique, wow, that really washes out everything, doesn't it? I like, wow, I'm glowing. Uh, I like to take three fingers and put them together like this. And here's my collar. And the three fingers with down is where I like to start my applique. And that's just me. That's usually how I do my placement for my applique. That's not the golden rule, I don't think. You could certainly bring it up higher or start it down lower if you wanted to, but that's 
just how I do. Before we do that though, uh, I want to secure my cutaway stabilizer on the inside of my shirt. Now, um, a lot of people use spray basting to do this, but I already have a headache and a spray basting really makes me have a headache. So I'm not going to use any of that. So instead, I'm going to turn my shirt right side out. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to glue baste this. Three fingers down. Just glue baste it because when I wash the shirt, any glue is going to come out anyway, right? Let's just do that because I kind of want this stabilizer to stay in place at least until I start stitching, right? And the stitching is going to start holding it in place as well. But I really just don't want it to move while I'm stitching. Have you ever used a stabilizer on the inside of a garment and you turned it over and realized like the corner had bent over and you stitched that right in, <laughs> folded over like that? It happens. I'm just eyeballing it, three fingers down. I'm gonna finger press that in place. And then I'm just going to dry that with my iron, just so it is bonded with my shirt. And that just takes a second, y'all. And then when that cools down, we can flip the shirt right side out. Let me take a sip of my drink. <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to flip this shirt right side out again. I'm trying to be a little gentle with it just in case. I don't want that stabilizer to come undone I would tell you one of the reasons why I like to use a cutaway like this versus maybe taking a piece of Pellon uh, fusible interfacing and just fusing a big square is because see this square you kind of see it See that? If you were to just fuse a piece of fusible interfacing to the back side of the shirt and forego using a tear away or a cut away, I think you would always see part of your shirt that lays flatter than the rest. Is that just my thinking? I think you would. I could be wrong. All right, we're going to peel this up. Oh, it did grab my little third leaf. It was just enough to hold it. All right, three fingers. You know what I kind of want to do? Let's take this and fold it and finger press the center. so that I don't put my bills and holly on my shirt lopsided. I've done that lots and lots of times. <laughs> All right, I can just see a little center fold. Just right there. Just like that. About three fingers down. There we go. I think that's going to look really nice on a black background like that. You know what? I'm going to raise it up just a smidgen. That's kind of a thin little point there. And now I'm just fusing it like we're fusing it onto a block for a quilt. Now 
this will be great because I don't think I have any shirts that have anything uh, with Christmas on them. Okay, so we're going to let that cool off before we move over to the sewing machine. I'm sorry about the colors on my camera, y'all. Uh, the black and the white really mess with the exposure of my cameras. So I'm going to wait to show you that <laughs> until this is cooled off and moved away. Uh, for the buttons, I'm going to use some of my Nana's DMC embroidery thread. And I'll probably use a full strand. Um, and I'm going to hand sew the buttons right in place just to cover these raw edges, right? Depending on the sizes of the buttons I use, I might have to use more than three. Um, I might have to use like four or five. We'll see. <laughs> now I do think this is going to be a little awkward, um, sewing the applique with you today. I have my camera in not probably the best place. We're going to come on over here to the sewing machine. There we are. Right now I still have the tray on, you know, the little table on uh, the base of my sewing machine. I might end up taking that off and just using, you know, the open arm of the sewing machine. We'll see how it goes. It's, again, it's been a long time since I've done this. So let's work out the kinks together. I have my open toe foot on, so hopefully you see really good. And I'm just gonna apologize now, see the back and forth with the camera. I've been having a really hard time with this lighting and this particular camera filming um, my stitching. And sometimes that looks really blurry and fuzzy and I want it to be clear. So I've left the auto adjust on and so it's gonna, adjust here and there and I'm going to try to pay attention if it's too much I'm going to turn it off but I really want you to have a clear view while I'm stitching so if it's not too much we're going to leave it on I feel like I'm talking a lot <laughs> all right just like any other applique y'all except for having to open up the shirt and lay everything flat I'm going to fit all of this. Well, no. First, let's pick a stitch. So I know I want to use um, a zigzag type of stitch, right? Because I don't really want the applique portions to fray too much when we wash it. So zigzag stitch. Um, let's bring it down a little bit closer, though and make it not quite as wide. Let's start there. Uh, can you see that? I think I want it a little bit tighter. You know what? I think that's okay. All right. So let me just tell you my settings. And that's what we're going with right there. Uh, 2.0 on the width and a 0.8 on the length. All right. And where do we want to start? I think we want to start. And I'm just thinking before I move all this in. We're going to start with the bells. So I'm going to bring all of this and just start fitting it right underneath of my presser foot. Making sure that cutaway stabilizer is coming right along with it. <laughs> right? I'm also, if 
you can see me up here, I'm also making sure that only the stabilizer is touching the table and the rest of the shirt is just scooted right on out of the way. All right, so let's start with the bottom part of this bell. We're gonna work our way there. And then I'll come up and do the silver parts of the bell and that's just too much, hold on a second. Okay, I'm sorry about that, y'all. I'm just going to turn that off. <laughs> uh, okay. We're going to start on the lowest part of this bell. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew uh, a couple of different pieces and then we'll slow down, okay? Uh, someone asked me last week before we get started, am I securing my stitches when I start and stop? My machine, when it starts sewing, takes a couple of stitches in place and then starts sewing. That secures the beginning. And when I stop, I'm using my needle cutter which ties a knot on the back side, which secures the work. If you don't have a needle threader or a needle, a thread cutter that ties off your work, uh, you probably do want to do a couple of stitches forward and back at both the beginning and the end. Okay. And you know what? I am going to take this whole table off because it's really making me nervous. <laughs> Let's just take that whole thing off. Of course, I have a million things stored underneath of. <laughs> underneath of that table. And don't look too close at the dusty bits. Okay. All right, we're going to pick back up. We're gonna stop right here for a second. I meant to sew this little thingling part of the bell <laughs> down before I did this and I just completely got ahead of myself, but that's okay. I usually like the stitches of those bottom layers to be covered by the stitches of the stuff on the top.
You see, each time I'm stopping, I'm just making sure that the shirt is not working its way up underneath of where I'm going to be sewing. All right, let's just stop and take a look at where we are. So I think that's all the bell parts are stitched down. Uh, we have the three holly leaves and then all of those pine cone parts. <laughs> and while I was sewing these down, I was thinking, you know what I might do with those pine cone parts is put on my free motion foot, foot and stitch down those. And so the edge won't be sewn down with a zigzag stitch like the rest of it. And so when it is washed, the very edges of those pine cone pieces might fray a little bit, which I think would be super cute. It would add a little bit of texture to my pine cone, I think. The heat and bond on the back side of the fabric is going to stop uh, a lot of the fraying, but it still might fray a little bit. So I'm going to stitch down the three holly leaves, right? Before I do, I want to show you something. I'll be right back. I want a little stem coming into my holly leaves. And so I'm going to be using my friction fine liner. And I'm just going to give myself a line guide because I don't want to forget to do that. Just like that on that one. Like that on that one. and like that so there we go with that i'm going to do the outside of each one of the leaves and then uh probably tighten up my stitch and make it a little bit smaller to do the vein the the little lines in the holly leaves you know uh Let's just talk about this for a second, and I'm going to take a sip of my drink. Let's have a chit chat for just a second. Many of y'all are going to be watching this and think it would be so much easier with an embroidery machine. And you're probably right. <laughs> but isn't this fun? Not only that, okay, so this is a pretty big design, right? It fits on a 12 inch block, almost edge to edge, leaving a little bit of space around the design. It's a pretty good size for the front of a shirt. Not many people have a hoop large enough to accommodate a design of this size. Uh, it's a pretty big hoop. I don't even know that my largest maxi hoop for my Bernina would accommodate this whole piece at one time in my maxi hoop. So a lot of us are, if we want a shirt like this, we're working on our home domestic sewing machine. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I just want to show you what it's like. It's very well possible. You don't have to have a $15,000 embroidery machine to do a shirt like this, right? Um, yeah, I think you can certainly do this on a home domestic machine. Now I'll get back to sewing. <laughs> but I know many of you are going to be like, well, why don't you just do it with your embroidery machine? I think it's too big for even my maxi hoop. Besides, we're having so much fun.
I'm going to stop right there because I noticed the very tip of my leaf does not have any stabilizer there. And I want that part to look like the rest of my shirt. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach in here and just loosen up the very corner of this. And I'm just going to fit this extra piece right underneath of that leaf right at the tip so that it looks exactly like the rest of everything else does even after I wash it. I think at the beginning of today's video I said, tis a season to be jolly. Just kidding, no it's not. <laughs> I think I'm jolly all throughout the year. <laughs> I hope that didn't sound too bad. to go quiet down the bird and then my chair hit the camera and moved everything. We're back. Okie dokie, let's take this off. At this point, all of my big stuff is sewn down. And I wanna switch over to a satin stitch or a really close, smaller zigzag stitch for that little vein that runs through the leaves. So let me just make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna test it out on some scraps here. That's really bright. That looks good. All right, I'm gonna bring my shirt back in. We're gonna do the little veins. Is it veins? All right, I'm going to start right there. All right, well, I have a lot of jump stitches to cut out on this design. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this off one more time. I'm gonna switch over to my free motion foot and we will be right back. All right, we're coming back. I'm just feeding this shirt through one last time. And I'm gonna do a free motion stitch around all of the little segments of that pine cone. And because I've used the same fabric for all of those pieces. They kind of just blend in together and make them a little bit harder to see. So I'm gonna take my friction marker. I'm just going around the raw edge at the bottom so I can really see these while I'm stitching.
you know you could even come in on a piece like this with some ink tense pencils fabric paint fabric marker and give yourself some shadows in between smaller bits like this to sort of help it have some dimension and more like a three-dimensional look to the piece um that would be awesome all right i'm just stitching close to but not on the edge just doing a straight stitch uh, many of y'all have seen me do this before i have my free motion foot on i have a straight stitch selected i have not lowered my feed dogs but you could do that on your machine if you want to give this a try and um yeah i'm just going to do a straight stitch around each one of the pieces Okay, so there we go. I think I got all the pieces. <laughs> all right, we're gonna bring this over and let me just switch this camera because that sewing machine gets so bright. I can move that out of the way. And we're just gonna open this up and just lay her down like that. So isn't that pretty? Now I still have quite a few little jump stitches on the front to cut, I think, or maybe not. I know on the back side I do. And at this point, I'm just going to hand sew some buttons. And my main goal is to cover these parts because all of this right here would be covered by those fabric berries on top had I used them. So I want to just cover all of this bit right here with the buttons. I'll bring you through sewing the first one. <laughs> I don't know if y'all want to sit here and watch me sew all of them. Let's see. I'm going to use my handy dandy chenille needle because it has a big eye and I can use my needle threader. I like a needle threader. Makes life so much easier. I have some red. I reckon that red will be okay. Some red DMC thread. And you know what? I'm going to pull off quite a bit. Because I want to sew on one button and just continue on the same thread until I cover up that space with buttons. That's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> I saw somebody say last week they had to turn away when I was doing my cross stitching and they couldn't watch. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> Me too, girl. I had to turn away too. Okay, so uh, 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 do I want to leave a thread tail? Yeah, let's leave a thread tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, I'm going to reach inside the shirt and come up to the outside and I'm going to leave myself a thread tail. When I'm done with all the stitching, then I'm going to use this thread tail that I'm leaving to tie a final knot and secure all those buttons in there. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Is that the right way? I do not know. Probably not. It's the way I'm going to do it. It'll be fine. Good size little thread tail. And I still have my uh, stabilizer down there too, right? I have not cut that off yet. Let's find some pretty buttons.
like that's nice I always be picking buttons with four holes in them let's do one four hole button <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward this part though y'all so you don't have to sit here forever while I sew on four hole buttons Okay, all right, I feel like I probably should have tied each individual knot and cut the thread instead of making some jump stitches there. Like, I feel like that that might get caught on something. Maybe when you're washing the shirt, if it's, you know, wrong side out when you're washing it. So I might go back in and do individual knots with my buttons. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> For now, it is going to stay like that. So let's just turn this right side out. And I apologize because the camera might wash out again. See where I added uh, that little bit of interfacing up at the top when I was at the top of that uh, little holly leaf. That very tip would have gone right off of the edge of my interfacing. And I wanted that to have stabilizer too. So working with the shirt, you know, fitting it all into the sewing machine um i have already loosened up a lot of the glue already but i just used uh some elmer's school glue and so with just a couple of easy little pulls and tugs that just lifts off of there and again if any little glue bits are stuck to your shirt when you're done that's going to wash out when you wash the shirt <clears throat> now this is a cutaway stabilizer so what that means is we're going to cut away all of the extra stabilizer leaving just a little bit right around our design now you can do that with a regular pair of scissors if you're careful my hands are shaky so i have an easier time with like a pair of duckbill scissors so let me go grab those Okay, here are my little duckbill scissors. They help uh, get close to designs uh, without really, hopefully, cutting into our shirt. And I might also use my little clips. They have a little bit of a curved end to them, and they can get into areas uh, that are a little bit smaller. I don't know that I'm going to remove everything that is within the design. Because again, it just sort of acts as a stabilizer in that garment. But I certainly don't want all of this extra here. So I'm just going to start trimming that away. Okay, 
there we go. You know what? I think I'm going to leave that all in there. It's certainly not going to hurt it. Now, as you start to wash this garment, this cutaway is going to get softer and softer each time you wash it. I do like to remove any parts that I think are going to like poke me. <laughs> uh, just because I, you know, I'm a little sensitive. So I like to remove the little pokey parts, but this will soften up the more you wash the shirt. So um, while it might feel a little stiff right away, and this is a, I'd almost say this is a heavyweight cutaway stabilizer, medium or heavy, uh, it'll soften up. So you know what? I'm going to try this on before we're done today. So hold on a second. I'm going to go ahead and just try it on. We're going to see before and after. I'm going to show you the before of me trying it on today. And then next week I'm going to wear it and I will have washed it. And we'll see how it all lays. If it's going to wrinkle or if it's going to be flat. And here we are with wearing the shirt. And you know what? I went to go put it on. I was like, you know what, Lisa? <laughs> I hope you sewed this to a shirt that fits you. Because <laughs> that would be horrible to go through all that. And the shirt doesn't even fit. <laughs> it's a brand new shirt. So there we go. I think it looks fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to wear it this holiday season. And uh if you make a quilt block or a shirt using this, I would love to see it. In the description box, there's a link to hop on over to the Creative Crew. Join us there if you haven't already. We would love to see your work. We do all kinds of stuff, y'all. Not just sewing and quilting related stuff, but all kinds of stuff. We even share um, like gardening stuff and all kinds of stuff. Creative stuff. Uh, yeah, and stay tuned for next week. I will wash this sometime in the upcoming week and we'll see how it holds up. I have a feeling it's going to do really well because that uh, stabilizer is on the heavier side. So I think it's going to hold up really well, even though nothing was washed. I'm a bad girl. And uh, yeah. Share your stuff with us. We want to see it. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I hope you give this a try on your sewing machine. You know, if you have an embroidery machine and you're a digitizer, you know, you have a software that will digitize this, but the hoop size that you have isn't quite big enough. Maybe you can shrink the design. I mean, it is a good size. Uh, it is a good size design. Maybe shrink it down so you can do it in a hoop that you do have. Okay, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye.